When designing the current house that we live in, I wanted to include efficient wood heating. When I was growing up, and most of my adult life, wood heating has always been part of the living situation. I've seen firsthand how different types of conventional wood stoves and fireplaces perform, but felt that there was a lot of waste and they took so much wood and they always need to be tended. You know, it's not too long after the fire dies out that the house will start to cool down. I've had some experience with rocket stoves. I built one, and I made a video of it all. We will link it in the description for it. I was really impressed with the clean heat and the high temperatures this produced. It could even burn pine, and it wouldn't leave any creosote buildup. The problem is with you know these rocket stove heaters that you make, they're not UL approved, so an insurance company won't cover your house if that's what you're going to heat your house with. A rocket mass heater was another consideration. These have the rocket stove clean burning aspects, but they also have a large thermal mass that absorbs the heat and radiates it out after the fire has gone out. The thermal mass heat storage property is the one that was very desirable to me. I've seen the videos of people swearing by how good their rocket mass heaters work, and I believe them. But I didn't think they were something that you'd want to put in a new house that was very pleasing to the eye, especially if maybe you might want to sell it later. This led me to discover masonry heaters, or some call it maybe a Russian fireplace or a counterflow fireplace. So I read up on masonry heaters. These are more like a fireplace. And insurance companies seem to be accepting of these. You know, I love the idea of storing heat to radiate later and the pleasant appearance of a fireplace. And I like the efficient hot burns of the rocket stove. Using modern high temperature insulations, I found I could incorporate them into a masonry heater to get those hot clean burns of a rocket stove and still have the heat storage. What I came up with is a masonry heater that looks like a natural stone fireplace with some rocket stove aspects to it and with the heat storage. There are many tons of material used in this. Brick, fire brick, refractory cement, stone, concrete, and steel. These supply a great deal of that thermal mass storage that I desired. We'll take a look at the firebox inside. Open the damper. So insulated fire box with that uh, ceramic fiber board and then I lined it with fire brick. In the center here is an ash dump that goes into the foundation. This will be the third season of burning and I broke a few of those fire brick in there but they're still usable. There's a passage off to the side that the fire will burn towards and then up a riser like you'll find in a rocket stove in the mass rocket mass heaters. So how this works is that the fresh air will come in underneath the hearth here. There's a passageway and it'll enter into the firebox. These are some slider valves that control the draft. door frame is made out of some hollow square tubing that the fresh air will enter and it'll heat up and come across the top here where it's open and it'll wash down across the door. It'll feed the fire. The fire then burns sideways to about right here where there's a ceramic fiber riser. We'll take a look inside now at the fire. Let me shut the draft off first. You can see the fire burning sideways towards the riser. This lever here is a bypass valve. If the fireplace is cold and you need more draft, 
when you first start the fire, you open this up and the gases will pour out this way, you know. But if it's fireplace is warm like it is right now, you just keep it closed. So the fire burns sideways to about right here, and then it'll shoot up the ceramic fiber riser, and it'll strike the cast iron bottom of the oven. From there, it'll spill down all around the riser tube, and if it's closed like it is now, it'll go back down all the way to the bottom and underneath the firebox. It'll then go horizontal across the bottom. It's all made of fire brick. So there's smoke channels all the way through there. And the fire brick will just absorb the heat. And then there's another passageway that comes up. And then it'll come across this way again. Across some more fire brick channels. And then back up here. And then back to a chamber right above the firebox that's open and will go out the flue right there. This is the main damper. The temperature in this firebox can get well over a thousand degrees. I think sometimes even over two thousand degrees. And I have seen it up to over nine hundred degrees when it strikes the cast iron bottom of the oven there. But by the time it gets out the flue at the top, it's just warm to the touch. You know, it's just warm gases and some moisture. And if it is cold outside, the moisture will freeze to the cap, chimney cap, and make icicles. So most of the heat is getting absorbed into the fire brick. As the fire brick heat up, they'll conduct heat out to the rocks, into the brick wall in the back. But the temperature is so high that if it touched these rocks and brick, they would just break up and fall apart. So in between them is a layer of ceramic fiber insulation. So it kind of regulate how much heat can come out to the surface. So the interior will stay a lot warmer than the exterior. And that's what will radiate the heat all night long. And then when the fire is done, it's out. You shut the damper here and shut off the fresh air down there. And everything will just radiate heat after that. Behind the brick wall of the fireplace, there's a small bathroom. And the fire brick will conduct heat out into the brick wall, and that will radiate out into this bathroom. And it keeps it nice and toasty in there. And part of it, though, is a closet. And don't need that to get heated well so in between the brick wall here and the interior fire brick there's about a two and a half inch air space so air can enter in there circulate up behind and then exit out of these square openings here this is some square tubing that extend all the way back into the air space I just use this one to keep my poker. It's a handy spot for it. In the wood storage area, I have a clean out door that will access smoke channels that go into the chamber above the firebox. To get into that chamber, I just need to remove these two screws and pull out that panel. And then I have access to clean out the whole chimney from the roof down, so it's a straight shot. And I have access to repair the dampers or replace them if necessary. On the bottom left of the fireplace is another clean out door. And I have access to the bottom of the fireplace here and the base of the riser. And on the far end over here, this big clean out door, I can open that up and I have access to the smoke channels that run all the way to the other end. I usually clean out this fireplace once or twice a year. Now in the oven, if I need access to the riser tube or anything below, 
I can remove the ceiling of the oven. That's just a slab of refractory cement just sitting on top of the fire brick. And the bottom is just a big cast iron pan. And that can be pulled out through the top too. And I have access then to the riser tube all the way down to the fireplace through the top if anything needs to be replaced in there. So far everything has held up just good yet. Well, I'm very satisfied with the performance of this fireplace. I, if you have the abilities to make something like this, I would highly recommend it. I think everybody would be satisfied. Just the warmth that comes out of here, it's just, you just can't compare it to other types of heat. You know, if your hands are cold, you can come here and find a rock and just warm them up real quick. My wife calls this the happy place. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe, like, and share.